Papa in the kitchen today. A great recipe from Melissa Graves using a vegetable called kusha. Hello, everybody. It's Melissa Graves, and we're at Dawn. I've put my knife down. Melissa Graves at Donna's Cafe in Madisonville, Tennessee. Today, I'm going to be making you a southern favorite kusha pie. You may have not have heard of kusha. A lot of people have used these as gourds, but they are actually a squash. And they've used them for decoration for the last 10 or 12 years, and now you can hardly find them anywhere. But I'm really blessed this year. I have some people growing them for me, um, several people. So we're going to have kusha all winter. So this one, I've been told from uh, my little friend at Bud's Berry Patch that this one is a small one compared to the other ones he has in his field. So as these sit throughout the year, the skin on them is going to get really tough. So don't be scared if you get one and you think you need a chainsaw to cut him open. Oh, this one's beautiful. And what we're going to do is we're going to scoop these seeds out. Now, when I was telling you about the flesh being really hard on these, you can pull the oven racks out of your oven and just put this whole thing on a baking pan and put him in the oven for about 30 to 45 minutes. And when you pull him out, the skin will just peel off of him. So don't be scared about having to do all this cutting and chopping. But if, we do, if you are able to cut it, then we will scoop out the seeds and we're gonna chunk him up in whatever kind of chunks you can get, doesn't matter. And we're gonna put him on a baking pan. And we're gonna put a little butter on him and a little salt. So we're making out of this a kusha pie. And I know several of you have been in my place and you've tried this before. Um, and we're gonna have an abundance of kusha. What I like to do first is I like to bake it in the oven and get the outer peel off of the uh, kusha. And then I chunk it up and I like to put it in a pot on the stove and with some brown sugar and sugar and some heavy cream and my spices. And I like to simmer it and I call that roasted kusha. And so then tomorrow I will take that roasted kusha and I will run it through uh, my blender and I'll turn it into pies. So in here we've got two and a half cups. I've got a three fourths cup of white sugar and then I've got about a fourth a cup of brown sugar. And here's that good heavy uh, cream, about a half a cup. And then I've got a couple tablespoons of flour. So we're making some kusha pie, and I've got my flour, my kusha, and my sugar, and I've got a, just a pinch of cloves and nutmeg. You want to be really careful with those spices because they can get really strong quick. And then I've got about a teaspoon of cinnamon and about a teaspoon of lemon juice and a couple of eggs. And then we're just gonna stir this up. And this is gonna go into an unbaked pie shell. And I've got my oven on 350 back here. And we're gonna bake it for around, I would say around 35 minutes, I would check it. This is gonna be the consistency of your pumpkin pie. And you're never ever gonna buy canned pumpkin again after you try this. It is amazing. It's one of my favorite things. And if you come out and check us out at Donna's, you'll find this um, kusha pie on my buffet, as well as that roasted kusha. I will put it out on my hot bar. So now you're gonna know a little bit about kusha. Um, the Indians didn't have pumpkins, they had kusha. They have a lot more flesh in them than a regular baking pumpkin. So these can be eaten savory, savory or sweet. Kusha pie, also roasted kusha. It looks delicious. I've never tried it. I don't know if you have, but I uh, may have to sample it.